uh, lashed out at some foreign embassies for allegedly issuing unverified uh, terror warnings on the nation's capital, the federal capital territory, Abuja, uh, posting uh, clickbait and causing panic in the country. This is what they said, posting clickbait and causing panic in the country. A Minister of Information and Culture, Al-Haji, Lai Mohammed, delivered this uh, disavowal at a ministerial session of the ongoing UNESCO Media and Information Literacy Week holding in the nation's capital, Abuja, uh, Mohammed said if indeed such security alerts was necessary, it was for the attention of citizens of the issuing countries in Nigeria and not for the Nigerian public. Now recall that the United States of America, the United Kingdom as well, uh, had on Sunday uh, warned of a possible terrorist attack in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, especially aimed at government buildings, places of worship, and schools, amongst the other th targets. Uh, the United States government proceeded to authorize the departure of its government employees and their families from Nigeria, uh, as serious as that, over the potential, uh, potential terrorist attack. Uh, the U.S. State Department announced the approval of the evacuation in its updated Nigeria travel advisory uh, on Tuesday evening. That's a quite a, a serious one. Um, Mark Adeba is a public affairs analyst. He joins us now to look at this unfolding situation. Mark Adeba, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Um, do you agree with the, the Minister of Information uh, and Culture, Al-Haji Lai Mohammed, who says that uh, uh, this, this situation and the uh, advisories issued by uh, the foreign embassies amount to what he calls a, a click Bait. That is something you put on a website so that people can click the link and go to your website so you can get more traffic going to your website. He says that um, it's clickbait and uh, it's uh, unverified, you know, in, to cause the country panic. Well, it's quite uh, unfortunate and absolutely reprehensible for, for the minister to have uh, trivialized the security and well-being and welfare of over 200 million Nigerians. Just like that, calling it a clickbait. You know, when you have a government that, that operates on the basis of falsehood, on the basis of denial, that is what you get. This is, you know, it is a known fact that Nigeria has a dysfunctional, a dysfunctional uh, secure intelligence, intelligence agency network. Our intelligence, our intelligence agencies are not up to their, uh, are not doing what they are supposed to do. They are, they are not, they are not doing their job. They are not doing it well. You know, you remember on March 28th this year, the Kaduna train attack. There was no intelligence whatsoever. There was, no, of course, they came out to say the brief intelligence, but nobody acted on it. But there was no, it, it, there was no proactivity in, on the side of the security agencies. People were. People who are attacked on that trade, people who are killed on that trade, people who are abducted on, the, on that trade. July 5 this year, there was no intelligence whatsoever as to the prepared attack on the Kujia PC. We have over 800 inmates, most of them adding criminal, including almost 100 Boko Haram terrorists, escaped from Kujia PC. Most of them have not been, have not been recovered, have not been uh, brought back into, that, uh, into, into custody. So, in, in the event of having such terrible dysfunctional security uh, machinery and having terrible intelligence uh, security machinery that cannot be able to preempt attempts, such large scale attempts on Nigerians and, and institutions. And then a foreign agency. Uh, in fact, you know that you know there's collaboration, there's a collaboration of intelligence uh, network uh, among the advanced uh, advanced countries. It was not it was not only UK, it was not only US. All other uh, you know countries came to say this is something that we should appreciate them for. It is not something to condemn them for. It is not something to trivialize about. Calling it a clickbait. But of course, most most Nigerians are not surprised. You know, knowing the pedigree of the minister. Or of information who, who said that thing. No, most people are not really surprised. You don't, no, not many people expect that minister to say anything that is, uh, you know, that is credible, actually. So, uh, considering his pedigree, uh, that, that's the uh, uh, unfortunate part of it. The issue is that if, it, if such large scale attacks could take place 
right to the basis of our security agencies, including in the intelligence community, without anybody being able to forestall it. And then, what, 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 on what basis, what authority does the minister or does this government have to pull the security report of, the, of those countries? America and UK and Co are not the kind of uh, countries that go about, uh, you know, uh, parading fake news. They must have done their job very well. They have done their own work very well. They have their professionals in the field. They have their security people all over the place, both human personnel and technology that are deployed all over the world. So they know what they are saying. And let me tell you, the minister is saying, he's good not in Abuja. He said it's just a clip bit. It's Kudena in Abuja. It's Buari, Buari, close to the Nigerian law school, not in Abuja, where Nigerian soldiers were killed just a few months ago. And the soldiers who are killed are the brigade of that soldiers who are guiding the seat of power, who are protecting the president. They were killed. None of those attackers has been arrested to date. None of them has been caught to date. And then we have, remember, the first coup in Nigeria. The first in Nigeria, it was the UK that gave the government intelligence report. The counter coup that came after, it was this same UK that gave the then government an intelligence report. As a matter of fact, the first coup, the Prime Minister Tafawa Balewa was offered a shield that we should be taken out of the country because it was going to be bloody. But he, he ignored it. And then he paid with his life. And Nigeria was thrown, has been thrown into terrible situations in that time. Because since that time, that the Fidia arrangement has been taught, has been unitarized by military fiat, we, have, we are yet to recover from it up to date. So nobody should throw away the intelligence report of, of America or UK or France or Germany or Italy or Canada. No, nobody, nobody should throw it away. Nobody should trivialize it as a mere clickbait. What do they stand to gain from it? We should have, what we, the government should have done was to, was to latch on it, was to benefit from it <coughs> and use it to forestall whatever is going to take place. Today, I, I work in Abuja. I work in Abuja. Look, many kidnappings are taking place in Abuja almost on, the, on a daily basis. Are you aware, minimum on a daily basis, within the Abuja metropolis, minimum of 50 cars, between 50, 50 to 80 cars are stolen every day in Abuja. People are being a victim of armed robbery in Abuja. You know, I, I personally have been a victim of armed robbery in Abuja. Of burglary and co in Abuja. So nobody should come and tell us that uh, well, it's a clip made that they are saying. In Abuja, you know, uh, about two or three months ago, that an entry within Abuja Metro Police was robbed in broad daylight. People were eating lunch and this and that, and then these guys just came in. It was shown on the CCTV camera. Came in and, um, and removed them and began to collect phones, laptops, and everything, and money, and everything. Robbed everyone else and escaped successfully. They were not caught. Within the Abuja Metropolis. So what you tell us that this is a, this is a fake news, this is a fake uh, security report, uh, or something like that. Nobody, for a government that is terribly incompetent in the area of, of security, no, 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 they, they cannot come and, come and tell us. What we should tell ourselves and Nigerians is that we must be vigilant, must be at, on alert 24-7 within that, within that axis. Within that axis. The Niger state government has come out. And you know, Niger states borders, you know, in fact, they have entered each other. Niger state and, and the FCT. They have come out to say that the Boko Haram terrorists and Israel terrorists are just a few hours from Abuja. We came out to raise that alarm some months back. Long before the bloody attack that killed our soldiers with impunity and he went away. Long before Kuje was Kuje in Abuja was attacked by terrorists and 800 added criminals were let were let loose. Long before then, the government, the state governors around that have been shouting that these guys are moving close to Abuja. They are moving close to Abuja. So why would UK and US now be lying? If terrorists have been killing our soldiers in Abuja. If terrorists have been abducting and kidnapping people within Abuja, and then somebody is coming out to say it's just a clickbait. Imagine what a terribly disingenuous way of dismissing a, a serious security situation. It is condemnable, it is reprehensible. You know, it is only a government like this that can keep up a minister like that. 
like many of them that are in this government, that have been kept there despite the fact that they are failed willfully. Look at the Minister of, of Education, for instance. Look at uh, a year, almost a year of suicide. Children at home, I have children who are at home, except for the ones that are going to maybe state university or going to public university. The ones who are in similar university who are at home. A, a further few but questions that's to ask now. you. And the Minister of Education is still in office now. Mark Adebayo, Mark Adebayo, can fire. you hear me, go. sir? Mark Adebayo, can you hear me, please? Uh, I'm hearing you. Okay, fantastic. I'm trying to get to uh, interject so I could ask you a further question. Um, you obviously are really, really pained and uh, upset, you know, um, at the minister's response. Uh, and for, for some people, it will be even the occasion, uh, whether that occasion called for such a response. This was uh, a UNESCO you know, event, Media and Literacy Week, you know, and what they were discussing there was fighting misinformation and fake news, the effect of misinformation and fake news. And that is what he brought to the table uh, as an example of fake news that can give uh, a negative effect. And he used the word clickbait. Clickbait is what you, people, you know, all these people who have blogs and websites can mm -hmm. just put a sensational headline to attract you to click it so that you can read more and then they get traffic yeah. and they can. Um, so for a minister of information to at a forum on misinformation and fake news to cite an example of a travel advisory, a security advisory um, or terror alert by uh, you know a diplomatic mission in its country in a forum on fake news and uh, uh, you know misinformation. Do you think that is where such uh, an example should have been raised. Do you think that this has to do with fake news? Uh, just very shortly, please. And how does it this speak? Neither, uh, it was neither the, the, the place nor the location to embarrass, to give such an international embarrassment to this, to, to this country by a city minister. And this thing, do you know that the effect of this is that these guys who are supposed, the security uh, personnel who are supposed to protect us now, because the government is saying it's threatening, they will relax, they will not do anything about it until it will happen. Until it will happen. You understand? So when you are saying such serious security alert that you are supposed to treasure and act upon, not to dismiss, you now dismiss it in, in such a in such a flippant manner. You know, what you do is that you discourage the security agencies from being proactive in tackling this menace. That is the problem now. Now the citizens are led to themselves, are led to themselves to protect themselves as the Rajan Juma has often times told us in this country that Nigerians must be able to get the means to defend ourselves because we have been abandoned by this government. And that is why that minister, uh, whose pedigree is not so, it's not something that is, uh, that, 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 that is commendable, you know, that you know, many Nigerians, you know, we are not the Minister of Defense. We are not the Minister of Defense. We are not the, the chief of defense staff. To come and tell us that we are, we are, we are, we are supposed to be a Minister of Information. But, but uh, Mark, Mark Adebayo, yeah, yeah, Mark Adebayo, yeah. Yeah, uh, he is not a Minister of Defense, but he's a member, uh, you know, of the cabinet, and uh, he can easily get the information uh, from the defense headquarters or from the DSS, who have the primary responsibility to protect Abuja, to be able to give to the to the to the media to the public maybe he has the information that uh, there is no imminent threat you know they have their briefings mm -hmm. and that's why he's passing on i don't know what you say about that but also um what do you what do you say about the fact that the americans are evacuating their staff you know from the embassy in abuja uh do you think that that really paints a very grim picture because you said the Americans will not, or the British will not say things like this if they don't have credible intelligence, which I think is is, is, is galaxies ahead of our, us. Um, what do you think he says about the fact that uh, the fact that they're, they're evacuating their staff says about the seriousness of the situation? They're, they're moving their staff out. It shows that it is a very desperate situation. It's a very volatile situation. It's an extremely serious security situation for them to be evacuating their staff and, and uh, issuing travel. Uh, travel advisories to their citizens that don't go to, don't go, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it, uh, tourism and the rest of that to Nigeria and the rest of that. The people should mind where they go, how they move, and the rest of that. You understand? So it's a very, it, it, it plays a very serious situation. And that, you see, what is important is that Nigerians should not listen to the minister. 
Nigeria should listen to the Americans and the British. That is what my own advice. But, but, but Mark, Mark Adeba, you, I'm sure you, Mark Adeba, I'm sure you, you recollect that there have been several instances in the past where they've issued terror alerts. They've, um, they have their level, you know, maybe orange, amber, red, you know, they have these things and travel advisories and nothing happened. And there was no breach of security in, in Nigeria. Several in the past. I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah, I, I am. But the issue is that the fact that they were exposed, you know, the fact that they have been exposed by these international credible security agencies uh, might dissuade the attackers from, from being ahead. And then they will go and look for other means. Other means to carry out their attacks. But nine out of ten times, those international security agencies are correct in their uh, in their report. In, 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 but but, uh, but back in nine out of ten, we can count. We can count five at least five times in recent, maybe in the past two decades. You know, uh, if I can say the majority of the travel advisories they've issued in the past two decades. Yes, they issued a travel advisory, but there was no attack, no breach. In, in the country, in Abuja or Lagos. They've issued several for Lagos. Nothing has happened in the Lagos where we are. That's why, I, that, the fact that nothing happened should not make us to treat it with levity. It is important for us to take every security alert very, very seriously. Like I said, most likely, because those guys have been exposed, then they would, they would drop their plans to do the attack. Yes, that's most likely. But for a country that has not been able to manage its internal security, to, to now be condemning uh, condemning what credible security, international security agencies are, are issuing us, it, it is absolutely unacceptable. That is what but, I but, 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 that we, we yeah. are galaxies ahead of us. So, why would we not to, if we lack the capacity for intelligence gathering to, to forestall such attacks, so many that have happened in recent times and in the past, no, why do we why do we throw away the people that are professionally minded in their in their, in their but, but but Mark, Mark another issue you know is is why would these foreign embassies or these these countries you know put out this information publicly when they have the internal means of communication to their staff and to their citizens what is the aim of publishing something such information that has the potential you know to affect the the mood of the country to create create panic in the public uh, and to even affect. Uh, in potential inflow of investment to the country, you know, what's the what's the aim of making such information public? If it's just an advisory and they're not sure if it will happen or not, why not do an internal memo, for instance? Well, uh, in terms of uh, the, the standard operating procedure of security architecture internationally, globally, all over the world, that is how it's done. That's a general security alert. For as well, you know, they are more concerned about their own citizens anyway. They are much more concerned about their citizens anyway. Because if, they, if there's an internal member that nobody hears about, how will people even be, become aware and be allowed? For a, a country like Nigeria that we know that the government will sit on that security report and treat it as if nothing has happened. Because the, 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 the government believes in more in political survival than the general security of the, of the people. You understand? The, with the attitude of this government, you show that they, they will be more in terms of they will be more uh, in tune with the political survival of their government than the general security of the people. If it is issued you know, privately through a memo, through a friendly memo, and uh, let me tell you, there are tons of friendly security memos exchanging us every day across the world. But this one, they have to say it because they issue a memo to our government. How would their own citizens know? How would the common people like us who don't have a retinue of, of soldiers and mobile policemen guarding us? People who some of us who don't have a bulletproof cars. So how are we going to know how to be able to be to, to be very to be security conscious? It is important, not only for the government, but for, for the general citizenry to be conscious of their secure of their individual and collective security. It's extremely important. So if a, a memo, a private memo to government minister who say this is a, a clickbait, people just sit on it and you know, some of it are not even get to the presidents. It is, a, it is, it is as, as, that, as bad as that. So we shouldn't. We cannot blame these countries for what they have done, considering the fact that Nigeria is at war with itself. Hmm. All right. Very interesting uh, analysis from you, Mark Adebayo, and uh, um, it leaves for a lot of a grim reflection.
uh, if you ask me. But thank you so much for your time, Mark Adebayo, Public Affairs Analyst, and uh, for thank bringing you so your wealth of experience to bear in analyzing the situation. Um, you spared no words to um, assess the performance and the delivery of the Minister of Information. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, of course, thank that's you so much for having me. Thank you. And that's the size of our package this morning on uh, The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have the news coming up at uh, 9. But don't forget, you can follow us on social media. We have our platforms on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. Also on YouTube, you can find us at Plus TV Africa and at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We have content uploaded on YouTube. You can watch us and live stream our programs every day and watch uh, recaps of our previous programs on our YouTube page. My name is Kofi Bartels from the entire team, uh, the cameraman uh, and the production crew right here at our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. Thank you for your time. We'll be back tomorrow. Good morning.